Asking now to gather in a little bit, we're going to have a few speakers. My name is Bill Paul. My name is Bill Paul. I'm chair of Mobilization Against AIDS, the national office here. We have a number of people representing community groups, AIDS organizations, and some of your political organizations, both Democratic and Republican. To start off with, I'd like to know how many of you here are outraged by Dick Majin's veto of our civil rights? How many, huh? Right here. How many of you would you like to do something about it? Yeah. How many? Right Raise your hand. Uh, All right, we've got a number of people that are going to tell you how you can do something about it. I mean, rhetoric is fine. We can stand around and tell each other how politically correct we are, how good we are, and how bad they are. The main thing is, right now, we've got to get together. The people who show up here are the ones who really care. A lot of people are demoralized. A lot of people on a last minute thing like this are a little bit, you know, put out. It's hard to be here. You're the kind of folks who will probably come out to work and help us. Thursday night, SF Can kicks off with the No on 64 campaign at 130 Church. We're going to have some folks tell you about that. Another way through direct action is a non-compliance project created in mobilization in which hundreds and thousands of people are pledging resistance and non-violent violation of these laws of their past. We have some other people to tell you about that. We've got a guy named Ken McPherson. You see him down here? In the face from an insensitive government. You know, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you that this is not ignorance, but it is. I wish I could tell you it's not bigotry, but it is. And I wish I could tell you it's not homophobia in the form of partisan politics, but it is. You know, I'm working on the campaign against the LaRouche Initiative. It's a nonpartisan campaign. I've been cautioned not to make partisan comments, but it's very, very difficult in a situation like this. We're supposed to remain silent when this governor tells us there is no discrimination against lesbian and gay people. We're supposed to remain silent when this governor tells us that there's no need for, for protection under the handicap laws for people with AIDS. We're supposed to remain silent when this governor slashes millions and millions of dollars that we need, dollars that will cost us lives, dollars that will cause suffering for people with AIDS, and we're supposed to remain silent. Well, Governor Duke Majin, we're supposed to remain silent because you might endorse against the LaRouche Initiative. Governor, your silence is deafening. <laughs> Governor Duke Majin, you should know that as long as a politician such as yourself remains silent on an issue which is talking about putting our people into concentration camps, your silence means you are an enemy. You are one of our enemies. We are going to organize the largest army this state has ever seen. We're going to register our voters. We're going to turn our people out in large numbers. And our army of people that is going to crush Lyndon LaRouche in this initiative will also throw you out of office unless you come to our help now. Governor, I feel sorry for you. You represent a long and distinguished party, a Republican Party, the party of Abraham Lincoln, the party that represents individual rights. And what are you? You are the representative of the party that represents Jerry Falwell and hatred and bigotry. You do not represent the party of Abraham Lincoln of compassion and civil rights and liberty and equality for all. We're organizing, and all I can say to you folks here tonight is that you have to organize. We have to organize, organize, organize. We have to give money, we have to give time. We're behind in the polls, we need help. Also, organize for our own people that are running for office. We have good people that are running for office, and a lot of, lot of funds have been diverted into our campaign. We need to put Pat Norman into the Board of Supervisors. 
We need to put Paul Walkman onto the community college board. We need to put Greg Day onto the school board. We need to put all of our people into as many offices as we can until we get some sensitive treatment from this government, which is insensitive. On Thursday night, there's going to be a party. Come and organize with us. We have only 90 days. Thank you. All right, well, thanks a lot. Now, Ralph represents probably the most progressive wing of the Democratic Party in San Francisco. Agnos told us, and what is really true is that this bill was one that was bipartisan. Things of people. It wasn't as though this were a radical bill. And to show you that's true, I'd like to introduce a concerned Republicans for individual rights, Chris Bowman. It seems like less than a month that we were out the attacks on our community that we have received from government in the last year. Let me finish. I want to tell you, the concerned Republicans is not indifferent to the problems that we are having currently with Mr. DeMajor. Our board, our board of directors met last night. And the nucleus, the basically the nut of the uh, statement is that. We have written to the governor, and we've told him specifically. He's to the AIDS advisory committee. So we have placed four conditions before we will even think about endorsing Mr. Duke Major. One, that he come out against the LaRouche Initiative and that he actively campaign against it. Two, that he meets with the... That he restored the majority of the money that he vetoed uh, last June, dealing with AIDS, and it was $20.3 million that he vetoed. And finally, that by executive order or executive action, he state to the people of California that AIDS discrimination is against the will of the state of California. Now, if he does all four of these things, then we will reconsider endorsing him. However, until such time, until such time as he meets with us and he meets four, three other conditions, we are not going to be supporting him this fall. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You know, uh, Duke Majin and a lot of the other, of the thousands upon thousands of straight people at risk, of the little children, of the very, very disproportionate injury and death inflicted on third world communities, uh, including many, many heterosexuals. Anyway, there is a tendency among gay folks and lesbians to feel isolated at a time like this, to feel as though we are a very tiny little minority in a sea of people who don't care about us. But you should know and you should recognize and remember that there are some leaders to whom the midget might look for an example of real statesmanship and real leadership and in this case, it happens to be a straight man who I feel honored to support. And that's Jack Molinari, president of the Board of Sat and Supervisors, San Francisco. I've come here tonight uh, because I'm angry as you are. I guess I wanted somebody or someone or some people to share that anger with. I stood on this uh, same platform a few weeks ago after the Supreme Court decision. I guess I'm a little shell-shocked about how much we can take from government all at one time. And I started thinking as I was coming out here what I wanted to do about my anger. I guess what I want to do is I want to make sure that that anger gets channeled in the right direction and that something gets done and that something gets turned around so that we get things back on track again. I think the first thing we have to do is defeat the LaRouche Initiative. We've got to get out this fall. We've got to put every bit of energy around that. Because I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. 
how I feel about this. Will you come and help me? Yeah. All right, that's the first thing we have to do. The second thing is, is we have to continue to make sure that we have people in public office. If you want to be encouraged to keep fighting, because we'll get this bill passed. You know, I would like to see Governor Duke Majin come to gay games too and see something like the spirit and the solidarity and the comradeship of this community. Maybe he'd begin to understand it, you know, but he won't. So there's no, really no reason to even send him an invitation. Let me tell you, I applaud the community coming out, taking a stand, showing their anger. Let's stay together, let's work together, let's defeat LaRouche, let's defeat Dick Major, and let's move ahead in California. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Jack. That's one of the reasons why so many of us support Jack. He's a straight guy, but he's straight up front. He's a straight arrow. Ah, uh, yes. We have a announcement direct from Sacramento. Thank you. Actually, I'm a terrible speaker. I tend to sound more like the Wicked Witch of the West because I'm so mad about this LaRouche thing. But Cleve Jones tonight is in Sacramento because there's something very important going on there that I think you ought to know about because it really shows that there are gay people not just here at 18th and Castro, but all over this state at this very moment willing to stand up and do something about this. And so I'm going to turn this over to Sister Sadie with Cleve's message for you. Hello, hello. We just talked to Cleaver a few minutes ago. There's a very important reason why he's not here. He wants you all in Sacramento tonight. They will be met by Cleave and a very large entourage of our gay brothers and sisters and our friends and supporters to let them know that we will stand up against this intolerance and this bigotry every place it happens. Now, you need to do the same thing, not here in San, in San Francisco, but to send that message to those of you whose mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and uncles and still love you and care about you and remind them that in their cities they can make a difference too. This is affecting the entire country. We need to be together, but we need to send that message out a lot further. Okay? All right. Thanks a lot, Kenny. One of my oldest friends in college, the guy who fought for things said already, but uh, one of the things I wanted to touch upon is what political clubs have been doing on this and what we, how we're disappointed by what's happened. And the reason we're so disappointed is how hard we have worked to make sure that the state assembly, through our work with Art Agnos and the state senate, uh, address this problem that was so very solely upon a letter writing campaign by the right wing of this state, the new Jerry Falwell, uh, Reverend Timberlake who his statement that I thought was most telling was our compassion for the victims of AIDS should not cause us to make a significant change in existing law without a compelling need to do so. Well, I say that's a hell of a compelling need to do so, and I think that we will. The insensitivity of that happening in the school systems against children with AIDS. We're seeing uh, elderly people, victims of homophobia, who passed out. But the crux of the statement is in the last paragraph, which says, my heart goes out to all Californians who are sick, who will become sick, and to their families and loved ones in this dark hour for our state. But he has vowed not to surrender at this point. He's scared of Thatcher's Association, hardly a hotbed of radicals, have supported this bill and are working with us on it. We're finally showing the nation for what he is, which is a, a despicable school of, of forces that created the hysteria that created the LaRouche Initiative. And we'll defeat them all. Let me hear you. Are we going to take this land down? No. But in order to do this, we need your money. We need your money. Silence. This time, it's always, you know, 
So I want everybody to hold up a $20 bill. Come on, let me see it. A $20 bill. A $10 bill. I don't want to hear no change. Come on. A dollar. Get it in the air. Let's see a sea of green. We need your money. We're not going to take this line down. SFK and Stop a Marouche need your money. It's, I know we've all been tapped down to the max with AIDS, all of it. But we need your money now. The buckets are coming around. Please put your money in the buckets. You'll see them with the yellow buckets. Great. <laughs> I already got my mind in there already. <laughs> Great. In order to...